The Battle of Modder River was an engagement in the Boer War, fought at Modder River, on 28 November 1899. A British column under Lord Methuen, that was attempting to relieve the besieged town of Kimberley, forced Boers under General Pete Cronge to retreat to Magus Fontaine, but suffered heavy casualties themselves. Situation in November 1899, when the war broke out, one of the Boers' early targets was the diamond mining centre of Kimberley, which stood not far from the point where the borders of the Boer Republics of the Transvaal and the Orange Free State, and the British-controlled Cape Colony met. Although their forces surrounded the town, they did not press home any immediate assault nor did they attempt to cross the Orange River on this front to invade Cape Colony. Meanwhile, British reinforcements were on their way to South Africa. Their commander, General Sir Redvers Bull, had detached the 1st Division under Lieutenant General Lord Methuen to relieve the Siege of Kimberley. This decision was made partly for reasons of prestige, as the capture of Kimberley would be a major propaganda victory for the British. During November, Methuen's force advanced north along the Western Cape Railway. They fought and won two engagements against Boers from the Orange Free State under General Prince Lou at the Battle of Belmont and at Graspin. Boer plans. The Boers had been reinforced by a substantial contingent from the Transvaal under General Cus de la Rey, who proposed a radical new plan of defence. He pointed out that the Boers had previously been easily driven from the corpus which they had occupied. The corpus had been obvious aiming marks for the numerically superior British artillery. Also, the trajectory of rifle fire from Boers on the top of the corpus was steeply plunging. It therefore had a chance of hitting its target only in the last six feet or so of its flight. Once British infantry had reached the foot of the corpia, they were concealed by boulders and scrub, and could then easily drive the Boers off the summit with the bayonet. De La Rey proposed to make use of the flat trajectory of the Mauser rifle with which the Boers were armed, together with the flat veldt. He called on his men to dig trenches in the banks of the Modder River, from which their rifles could sweep the veldt for a great distance and won him over. General Pete Cronge, who arrived later with the main Boer force, acquiesced in this novel plan. The area contained two prominent hotels and the village of Rosmead, which was used as a resort by prominent businessmen from Kimberley. The Boer trenches were at 29 degrees 2 minutes 21 seconds south 24 degrees 37 minutes 35 seconds east 29.03917 degrees south 24.62639 degrees east minus 29.03917 24.62639 on the south side of the Modder and the smaller RIET river which joined it at Modder River State. The Boers had six field guns and one Maxim pom -pom, from the Orange Free State Stay at Satillery. They deployed these not as a concentrated battery, but as widely separated individual gun detachments north of the Modder and to the east. They had dug several emplacements for each gun, allowing their guns to switch position to avoid counter-battery fire. British plans Methuen's force consisted of two infantry brigades, two mounted regiments, three batteries of field artillery and four guns of the naval brigade. Further reinforcements were arriving up the railway. The British cavalry made some attempts to scout the ground ahead of the army, but failed entirely to detect Alari's trenches and other preparations. At 4.30 a.m. on 28 November, Methuen's force roused itself, deployed into line and began advancing towards the Modder, with no plans other than to cross the river before having breakfast on the far side. The battle, as the British troops came within 1,200 yards of the river, Methuen remarked to Colville, They're not here, Colville replied. They're sitting uncommonly tight if they're. At this point the Boers opened fire. Most of the British troops were forced to throw themselves flat. Some tried to advance in short rushes but could find no cover on the veldt. Few British troops got closer than 1,000 yards to the Boers. 
The guards tried to outflank the Boer left but were unable to ford the Riet River. The British guns pounded the buildings near Modder River Station and the line of poplar trees which marked the north bank of the Modder, and entirely missed the enemy trenches on the south bank. Meanwhile, the Boer guns maintained a galling fire, and kept in action by repeatedly moving their positions. The battle became a day-long stalemate. Most of the British infantry lay prone on the veldt, tortured by heat and thirst, but safe from enemy fire unless they moved. Many stoically smoked pipes or even slept. Matthew and galloped about the field trying to renew the advance, and was himself wounded. At midday, some of Pol Carew's 9th Brigade found the open Boer right flank at Rosmead Drift downstream. British infantry infiltrated across the ford and about 1 p.m. drove the Boers out of Rosmead. The attack was disjointed, and suffered casualties when a British field artillery battery which had just arrived on the field shelled them by mistake. By nightfall, De La Rey had driven him back into a small insecure bridgehead. Nevertheless, the Boers feared that they were now vulnerable to being outflanked, and withdrew during the night. Aftermath, Methuen reported that the battle had been one of the hardest and most trying fights in the annals of the British Army. Although casualties had not been cripplingly heavy, mainly because the Boers opened fire prematurely, it was clear that any simple frontal attack by infantry only against an enemy using bolt-action rifles was effectively impossible. The delay allowed the Boers to construct the entrenchments which they were to defend in the Battle of Magus Fontaine. On the Boer side, there were about 80 casualties, including Adrian, the eldest son of Cus de la Rey, mortally wounded by a shell. Account of the battle Modda River The 28th of November 1899 British victory Tilda was a tiring day again with the heat and especially after forming at 4.30 a.m. and being the third battle in a week. Boers fled after British catch vital positions. Fiercest battle yet fought in the war. An almost impossible offensive task. The total Boer casualties may perhaps have amounted to 150, mainly due to shell fire. 70 British were killed and another 413 were wounded.